August 28th, St. Augustine of Hippo. St. Augustine was born in the year 354 near Hippo, an ancient town in northern Africa. His father was a pagan who converted on his deathbed through the prayers and pious example of his mother, St. Monica. He was brought up in the Christian faith, but without receiving baptism. An ambitious schoolboy of brilliant talents and violent passions, he early lost both his faith and his innocence. He persisted in his irregular and immoral life until he was 32. Being then at Milan professing rhetoric, he tells us that the faith of his childhood had regained possession of his intellect, but that he could not yet resolve to break the chains of evil habit. In Milan, while professor of rhetoric, Augustine met St. Ambrose, who was a bishop there. Under the guidance of St. Ambrose, Augustine studied the Holy Scriptures. The Word of God produced in his soul a radical crisis. He accepted holy baptism, gave all his wealth to the poor, and was tonsured a monk. In the year 391, Valerian, Bishop of Hippo, ordained St. Augustine a priest, and in the year 395, appointed him vicar, bishop of the See of Hippo. After the death of the bishop Valerian, Augustine took his place. During his 35 years as bishop, St. Augustine wrote many works. The best known of these are The City of God, The Confessions, 17 Books Against the Pelagians, and The Handbook of Christian Knowledge. St. Augustine was concerned, above all else, that his writings be intelligent and edifying. It is better, he said, for them to condemn our grammar than for people not to understand. St. Augustine died on August 28th in the year 430. In his work, The City of God, he describes the fight between the sons of light and the sons of darkness as the axis of history. His thinking established a foundation for Christendom and Christian civilization. The theme of that extraordinary work is the perpetual and irreconcilable fight that takes place between two cities in history. The city he speaks of comes from Latin, civitas, and should be understood to be more of a state than a city. These two cities are the city of God and the city of the devil. He conceives all history as a battle between the Catholic Church and the power of darkness. The struggle results from two different loves. In the city of God, there is the love of God to the oblivion of oneself. In the city of man, or city of the devil, there is the love of oneself to the oblivion of God. To live for self is to consider oneself the minuscule center of the universe, with everything turned toward one's own pleasure and interests. This egotism is the starting point for every bad thing. On the contrary, to love God is to turn oneself entirely toward the transcendent realities we find in Revelation. It is to have a metaphysical spirit, a religious spirit turned toward the highest things. This is to live for God. With these two principles, he summarizes all of history. In this summary, Professor Plino suggests that there is a very beautiful point to consider about St. Augustine. That is, that he wrote his books as the Roman Empire of the West was falling, when everything pointed to the probability that the Catholic religion would be swept from the earth after the barbarian invasions. In fact, Hippo and Carthage in North Africa were so devastated that almost nothing was left of these cities. Notwithstanding, St. Augustine serenely wrote his books for a future that was uncertain. He died as the Vandals were entering his city. The world he knew fell. The Middle Ages came. And then it was the works of St. Augustine that inspired the medieval concept of state, empire, and Christendom. Charlemagne used to listen to the readings of the City of God during his meals, and the empire he founded was inspired directly by St. Augustine. The Middle Ages, in a certain way, is a lily born from the works of St. Augustine. Centuries after his death, his confidence was rewarded. Therein is a lesson for us. In our times, when the new vandals are destroying both the cultural values and the material buildings of Christian civilization, we should carry our work on with faith and confidence, knowing that it will serve to build the reign of Mary when God so decides. Reflection by St. Alban Butler Read the lives of the saints, and you will find that you are gradually creating a society about you to which, in some measure, you will be forced to raise the standard of your daily life.